Let's talk. and welcome back to this week's episode of Brand Your Passion. Today we are going to be talking all about how to effectively design your logo because I know (laughs) that designing a logo or getting a logo for your brand is kind of the thing that stresses people out more than anything else (laughs) or maybe on par with like growing Instagram, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago. (laughs) It's really the thing that often can hold people back from getting started or they feel like they need to have the perfect logo before they can do anything else. So I'm here to help you with this process today. First and foremost, as a disclaimer, if getting a perfect logo really really is holding you back and stopping you from just like getting your products out there or selling your services or whatever it is that you're trying to create then please don't worry about it (laughs) on instagram and social media i will say that i don't even think that you necessarily need one and i've said this before and it might come across as weird from a branding specialist to tell you that you don't need a logo (laughs) my preference is for you to just start creating and to start making making money and growing your business from the thing that you love. So if a logo is getting in the way of that, then let's just not worry about it. So on Instagram, you can use a photo of yourself is like the magical, like that's all you need. Using a photo of you is going to work wonders without you having to worry or stress or spend time or energy creating the perfect logo. That's number one. Or if you really feel like you need a logo, but you don't know where to start, just type out your name. (laughs) Just type out the name of your business in a cool font or something that feels like vaguely aligned. Use that for now. Just anything that is gonna get you started is the key. And then we can focus on building your logo later on, which now I'm gonna talk to you about how to do that. But I just wanted to give you that disclaimer because I know that is such a stressful thing and I really would hate for you to miss out on sharing your work with the world and getting more clients and selling more products and stuff like that if the logo is the thing that's holding you back. Now that we've got that out of the way, if you're like, okay, well, I've already had a logo or I'm ready to create a new one. How do I do that? Let's talk. You probably know that I'm already going to say this because it's the most important thing, but you want to make sure that firstly, you have clarity around your brand strategy first. Just like in the last episode that I was talking to you about, there's no point in creating anything visually for your brand or any kind of brand elements or assets if you don't have clarity on what you're doing why you're doing it who you're doing it for where you want to go what your goals are what your vision is your values if you don't have that stuff clear it's going to make it really really hard for you to make stuff like your logo and your patterns and things like that and it's also going to mean that those things are most likely not going to be very intentional or strategic or successful. You are likely going to have to redo them, which we don't want you to have to do. Make sure you have clarity about that stuff first. Make sure that you have done some work around defining your vibe. So what is the visual direction of your brand going to be? What do you want to do in order to convey all of your mission and your vision and your message to the right people? Okay, so you want to be able to to create a mood board or a stylescape or something that is going to communicate kind of the direction of your brand based on your brand keywords and your personality and the feelings you want to convey. And I talked all about that in the last episode. So make sure you listen to that if you haven't already. These two things are really key before you start doing any design work on your logo or anything like that. Make sure you've done those two things first. If you have, then let's dive in. So you obviously want to decide if you are doing this yourself or if you're going to hire a logo or branding designer to do this for you. That's a decision that is totally up to you to make based on a lot of things like the time you want to spend and the skills that you already have yourself whether you have the skills to do logo design or not make that decision and then come back here some of the stuff I'm going to go into how to actually design it but then I'm also going to talk a little bit about how to determine kind of a good logo so even if you are working with a logo designer or a branding designer hopefully they know this stuff too but you will know kind of what to be looking 
looking for to choose the right logo for you if they're giving you options or you need to provide feedback. These questions and the things that I'm going to cover are going to help you in doing that too. So stick around even if you are hiring somebody else. Okay, so first you are probably gonna want to find some inspiration, which you should have kind of already done in your mood boarding phase, but you might wanna create kind of a collection of logos that are similar to kind of the direction that you wanna take your brand in or have elements that you're like, yeah, I like kind of the layout of that or I like the orientation of that or the different versions that this logo kind of has. Kind of gather some inspiration and this, as with any design stuff that I'm talking about, is never about copying. It's about finding inspiration and there's a very thin line there. But we're not copying these logos. We are finding elements that are gonna inspire yours. Just be aware when you're gathering inspiration that you are not gathering it so that you can like make yours the same, right? Then what I like to do next is to sketch a bunch of ideas. So you can do this on paper or digitally, however's gonna work best for you. Sketch a bunch Bunch of ideas based on inspiration that you found based on your kind of brand strategy the mood board that you created sketch some ideas that are going to convey those things and it's important to note that a logo doesn't have to really literally represent what you do if you are a photographer you don't have to have a camera in your logo or a polaroid photo paul rand says that a logo is a flag a signature a street sign a logo does not sell directly it identifies a description of a business a logo derives meaning from the quality of the thing it symbolizes not the other way around a logo is less important than the product it signifies what it represents is more important than what it looks like the subject matter of a logo can be almost anything this is really important to remember because you can find inspiration in your brand from anything. It doesn't have to be just what you do. If you think about the National Geographic logo is literally a square, but it's so memorable. The McDonald's logo isn't a burger, it's an M. It's not about showing what you do, it's about creating something really memorable that people are gonna recognize. When you are sketching your ideas, you can be thinking about inspiration from anywhere in your business or anything about your values or your story story or your vision for example like a client of mine her name includes the ko-fi tree and the ko-fi flower she sews it's nothing to do with what she does it's about the story behind where her business came from you can do the same thing so look at your story look at kind of your audience look at your values and all of those things and what you can put into your logo that will represent that when you are designing you always always want to start in black and white because it can be very very easy to get distracted by fun colors and to focus on what it looks like when it's in color I and mean, you can start adding like gradients and shadows and all these things but you want to make sure that your logo is going to work in just black and white that you are in love with how it looks just black right so just start in black and white it helps you to get the layout right to get the spacing and all of the important things right before you start adding fun stuff like color texture gradients all of those things they're super fun but you want to make sure that you're starting in black and white as I said earlier, starting with just a font is kind of the easiest way to get started. So you wanna choose kind of the software that you are gonna be using. That could be Canva or Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, whatever it is that you're comfortable using. There are a bunch of things out there, so just find something that is accessible and useful for you. Then you can start with just typing out fonts, finding fonts that are aligned with your brand. Fonts have a lot of imbued meaning they convey a lot of emotion and a lot of different themes and topics so you can be really smart with the fonts that you choose fonts that are gonna be easy to read that are gonna stand out and that are gonna represent you well start with arranging those in different ways and then you can start adding other elements that also represent your strategy and fit in with those things so maybe you're adding it might be lines to accent things or little shapes like dots or 
or lightning bolts or whatever it is you can add in those elements as you are going along so start with the font and then play with adding in the extra elements now there are a bunch of different types of logos I have a whole article on this on my blog so if you want to read that you can do that but essentially there are seven different kinds of logos and you can choose whatever is going to work best for you so a word mark or a logo type is just typography so if you write out your whole business name in a font that aligns with your direction then that's going to be a word mark or a logo type my logo is a word mark because it just says black and white studios and that's kind of the logo that's it another type of logo is a monogram or a letter mark and that's when it's an acronym say i'm trying to think of brands that have acronyms but like img cbs I don't know, like ABC, you know, these kind of brands. If you have an acronym, you can use a monogram or a letter mark. Then you can use a brand mark or they're sometimes called symbols, icons, pictorial marks. So that's like the Twitter logo would be a brand mark because it's an icon or a symbol. You can also get abstract logo marks. That could be something that's not like a bird or a dog or a photo. ConvertKit's logo is an abstract logo mark if you've seen it like a swirl kind of thing. The fifth option is a mascot. People have mascots for their brand. Again, I'm trying to think of other examples. <laughs> Sports team, for example, has a mascot logo probably and they have that mascot that like comes to life <laughs> then you can have combination marks that's where you might have an icon and a word mark an abstract logo mark and a monogram there are different combinations you can make to create a combination logo and then you might also have an emblem so an emblem logo is it will look like a badge or a shield or something like that it's a more complicated combination mark that specifically is yeah like a badge or a shield or something like that so those are the different types of logos you are most likely going to have a word mark a brand mark or an abstract logo mark or a combination of those but you can read my article get to know a little bit more about different options and choose the one that's going to be right for you. Then you want to make sure that you're asking these questions to make sure that you are designing an effective logo that's going to work really well. And I have another article all about this, but I'm going to run through them for you anyway. Number one, is it easy to read? If your type isn't easy to read, then it's not going to work. So make sure it's easy to read. Number two, does it work in black and white? So as I said, in black and white from the beginning, this is because there are going to be situations possibly where you can only print in black or your logo is like in a lineup of other logos on somebody's website they're all in black that kind of thing so you want to make sure that it works in black and white equally you want to make sure that it works in just one color say you put your whole logo in orange or your whole logo in pink is it still going to work if you are requiring or kind of depending on gradients and textures you're going to be okay most of the time but there are going to be situations that are not going to work. If you listen to my last episode where I was talking about the ways that you can create like a long lasting brand and how creating a brand that's going to stand the test of time, having a logo that works in black and white in one color, that's going to really help you to be able to apply your brand anywhere and everywhere. Same with the next question. So do you have multiple versions of your logo? You might have seen mine. I have like the full I have just the ampersand version, just the icon, a stacked version, and I have a shorter version. So there are in total, I think, four or five different versions of my logo that are all consistent and like the same thing, but in different orientations and layout. So my brand and my logo is going to work teeny, teeny, tiny in the favicon of my website. That's the little icon that goes in the tab on your in your browser. So I can use the icon version there. I can use the full version at the top of my website. I can use the shorter version like on the bottom of Instagram posts or whatever it is. I have different versions that are going to work everywhere. 
Next question is, does it work at a super small size? That's like I said, Favicon is like normally the tiniest place that you'll see your logos. In the tab on your browser, does your logo still work there? Does it stand out? Is it gonna be easy to spot when someone like me has a million tabs open? And then equally, the next question is, does it work really, really big? Dream big, right? Is your logo gonna be on a billboard one day or on the side of a bus? <laughs> Wherever your brand's gonna be, think about how it's gonna work if it's really, really, really big. And that's where you have to pay attention to details and make sure it looks amazing when it's blown up massive. <laughs> Next is, does it work on a variety of backgrounds? So does your logo work over a photo? Does it work over a pattern? Does it work over a gradient? Um, that's where it's gonna be helpful to have it be able to be used in black and white and one color to make sure it works on a variety of backgrounds. And then lastly, does it stand out? If I put my logo beside 10 others on somebody else's website, is it gonna look exactly the same? or is it gonna stand out and make people wanna click on my website? So those are key questions to make sure that you are creating an effective logo that's gonna be amazing. So we have covered making sure you have clarity first, you've defined your vibe, you've decided if you are doing the design of your logo yourself or you are gonna be hiring someone else, then you're gonna to wanna to find inspiration, choose your software, sketch some ideas, start in black and white, choose fonts, add other elements, choose the right logo type for you and use those key questions to make sure you're creating one that's gonna work really, really well. So I hope this has been super helpful. If you have any questions about logos and you wanna chat about logos, <laughs> let me know. You can always join the club, the Creators Brand Club. That's where you'd be able to get like feedback on your logo, get a bunch of people to help you to choose the best one for you, all of that magical stuff. It would be awesome to have you in the club and doing that work with us. If you are watching the video, please make sure to leave a comment below and let me know um, if this has been helpful and how your logo is going and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And as you know, you can always, always tag me on Instagram or Twitter or send me an email and I would love to chat to you. So hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.